ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته ويلكم تو ابيسود 4 اوف ذس اكسايتنج جيرني ثرو اور اسلاميك هيستوري ان يوروب اند ناو وي هاف كم تو ذا بوينت ذات وي فينيش ذا فيرست 3 ابيسودز اباوت يوروب we're going to talk about a continent which i personally feel very very attracted to which is the continent of africa mashallah africa is 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 a massive continent huge not the way we we look at it if you look at the map nowadays africa is not portrayed the the way it should be it's much bigger than it really is portrayed on 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 the world map um and it is indeed huge and massive massive Um, as well as its history in contrast to what people believe or what we are made to believe that africa has no civilization has no culture is backwards people are just basically poor starving this is the ideas that are given to us this is what we believe africa is about it is the total opposite i guarantee you that i have been several times to several parts of africa and again because we have one episode about africa that does not mean that with one episode we've covered the whole continent we're talking about 53 countries impossible of course to cover the whole of the whole continent uh, with one episode and we're not aiming to do that what i'm aiming to do is just to introduce you uh, the way that islam spread in africa and again go against false claims and uh, myths and narratives that have developed in the last couple of decades or centuries with regards to the muslims and islam in africa It starts already actually with regards to statistics if you look at different sources describing Africa and the population in Africa you see already how different uh, they approach this issue of how many how big is the population of Africa as we said 53 countries the population of Africa is between 320 million to most probably 400 million plus it's not uh, there's conflicting statistics as i said before and depending on what source you take depending on where you're looking into the uh, population itself uh, has a, a massive there's a massive gap amongst them and now with regards to muslims and christians that's another problem again because the west likes to portray africa as um the backyard especially certain countries in africa uh, the colonial powers they would like to show that africans actually um uh, have accepted christianity uh, there are many more christians in africa than there are muslims for example which is not correct not true most statistics actually tell you that there are more muslims even nowadays in africa than there are christians however africa as a continent actually was a muslim continent rather than a christian one what do i mean with that i mean simply of course christianity as an established faith religion existed before islam so everybody would say it's logical that christianity had come to africa before islam logical right now this is not entirely true north africa as well as the country of ethiopia for example have strong and old christian communities without a doubt ethiopia actually is very well known throughout the world of being an orthodox country of having an old christian uh, tradition without a doubt ethiopia and eritrea so in east africa in certain parts of east africa and in certain parts of north africa certain pockets in north africa such as the copts in uh, egypt there you will find some um, older christian uh, communities without a doubt before islam However, with regards to West Africa, Central and Southern Africa, that is entirely the opposite. Islam came to West Africa and the other parts of Africa before Christianity arrived there. Christianity arrived in West Africa and other parts of Africa after the missionaries after colonization of Africa and after the missionaries arrived from Europe in these part and in, in these countries in Africa. So basically, the majority of the countries in Africa that claim to be Christian nowadays were actually not Christian they were actually they became Christian after Islam had already spread there countries such as Tanzania for example which used to be an entirely muslim country has become nowadays 50-50 if not even more Christians so the missionary activities have been in the last century very very strong 
and Christian missionaries from Europe arriving in Africa and uh, um, um, portraying their religion or putting their Christianity, um, um, imposing their Christianity on people is without a doubt uh, has been happening for the last couple of decades, if not even centuries. The presence of Islam in Africa. Now, let's go back. How did it all start? You know, if, if we say that Islam had arrived before uh, Christianity, then that means it couldn't have arrived before the 7th century because that's when the, the established deen of Islam uh, was there. Prophet Muhammad SAW, um, of course, uh, was active in the 7th century. And indeed, before the 7th century, there was just some pockets in Africa, as I mentioned before, in North Africa and in East Africa, especially in Ethiopia, Eritrea, where you would find uh, the churches and the Christians being active. So what happened in uh, the history of Islam? The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, advised a number of his early disciples who were facing persecution by the pre-Islamic inhabitants of Mecca to seek refuge across the Red Sea in the Christian kingdom of Abyssinia. Abyssinia, of course, that time, the borders that we know nowadays were not the same. Abyssinia was a nation which nowadays is part of Ethiopia, well, modern-day Ethiopia and Western Somalia. So uh, that covered these regions. Um, and the ruler of Abyssinia was called an najashi an najashi accepted the Muslims that time, allowed them to stay in his country, allowed them to stay in Abyssinia and even listened to them listened to them and wanted to know why are they persecuted? Why do they want refuge? What exactly is happening in Arabia? A very important point for us Muslims to realize now finally is that An-Najashi listened to them and after what they told him about Maryam salam, this is a very well-known story, after he found out that the Muslims actually are closer to his belief than Christianity is, he said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. And Najashi accepted Islam. And now, the turning point of Islam, definitely in Africa, but in the world as well. The first ruler, have you ever thought of it? The first ruler in the world to accept Islam was an African king. And Najashi was the first ruler in Islam, the first ruler who accepted Islam. Okay? This is amazing, an amazing fact I find that we have to realize that Islam except um, Africa, an African ruler accepted Islam as the first ruler in the world. Ruler. The first ruler in the world was an African king. And from there on, it went without a doubt inwards. From there on, East Africa um, moved on. And, and, as we said before, North Africa, North Africa, the Arabs from the Arabian Peninsula, moved and migrated into North Africa. The Berbers, the indigenous people, the indigenous North African people living in North Africa, accepted Islam within a couple of years. Tarek bin Ziyad from nowadays the region of Morocco, he went as a Berber to Al-Andalus, opened Al-Andalus uh, for Islam, brought Islam into Europe. Massive energy. We're talking about from the moment that Africa accepted Islam, Islam was exported into Europe. Subhanallah, have we ever thought of this? Have we ever thought of this, what that actually means? So, North Africa became Muslim. North Africa became Muslim. East Africa became Muslim. How did Islam end up in West Africa? Through trade. There we go again, the sword. Now we're going on with the narrative. You know, Islam was spread by the sword, which again, he has proven wrong. Traders, Arab traders and Berber traders from North Africa went they kept going with their trade, as we were doing before, and they traded with West African nations. So, from North Africa, Islam ended in countries such as in Ghana, Nigeria, Senegal, the Gambia, and so on, and so on, and so on. And again, we don't have the time, unfortunately, to go deeper into different empires that developed, because we should not forget that actually with Islam, a massive amount of empires developed in Africa, and the energy that we feel in, 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 in the Islamic history of Africa is amazing. I mean, I could be talking about this one uh, episodes long. So, when Islam arrived in East Africa, it did not arrive by the sword. It was not brought to East Africa by some warriors. It was brought by some refugees. SubhanAllah, there we go again, the issue of the refugees. So, refugees arrived in East Africa and Abyssinia. 
the king accepted Islam, and from there on, Islam was introduced in the rest of East Africa. West Africa through trade. North Africa, the Arabs went to North Africa, but again, nobody forced the Berbers to accept Islam. They did accept Islam slowly, but surely. And once they had accepted Islam, these people went to Europe. Amazing. So, North Europe, South Africa, Trans-Saharan Africa. So basically, from there on, Islam just spread through Africa. That's how simple it is and that's how easy it is. So I don't see any sort and I don't see any fighting from that perspective. This does not mean that, of course, uh, battles happened, of course, but that was because of power reasons. That had to do with people wanting power, with people wanting the throne. These are all things that we can see throughout history and not only in Africa, but also in Europe and in other parts of the world. The other important point is to mention maybe in East Africa, especially because of the connection to the Arab world, East Africa is, of course, due to the location. Immediately there was trade, there, there had been trade actually before Islam uh, with the Arabs and with the Arabian Peninsula. Now, nowadays we are told, look, what the Europeans did in West Africa mainly, and they took slaves and they took them to America and, um, and uh, they treated them inhumanely. The same thing the Arabs did on the other side, in East Africa. This is absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense. First of all, let's make this clear. The trade relation between East Africa and the Arab world was not only slaves. They were also slaves. Also, the name slave, by the way, just to make this a point again, slave. Have you ever thought of where the name comes from? What does slave actually mean? Slave comes from Slavic, Slavic people. The Slavic people are the ones that are nowadays on the Balkan Peninsula. These Slavic people were actually the first slaves that the Greeks, the ancient Greeks, used to have them as slaves. It was not a color issue. They were actually blonde, blue-eyed, tall people. Okay, so a slave is not somebody who comes from Africa. Originally, a slave was somebody who came from Europe, a Slavic person, okay, who uh, was considered by the Greeks worthy to be a slave. Um, so, as the name says itself. So, East Africa had, uh, of course, also, uh, they were dealing in slaves, but it was not just an African thing, it was just something that Africans were doing amongst themselves. They were dealing with each other um, in a way of, because of wars, they would exchange slaves, they would take slaves from uh, the, the, the losers, or the loser party. The same that they would actually do in Europe in the past, um, and the Arabs would do exactly the same way. They would deal with it in exactly the same way. So it is not an exclusive thing that uh, was happening in Africa, and it's not something that just the Africans and just the Arabs were doing. Not at all. And now we're going back to before Islam. This happened before Islam. Before the Arabs accepted Islam, before Islam spread in Arabia, there was already trade between Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. So slaves were exported and taken both ways before Islam. Once Islam came, Islam is, was there actually to abolish slavery. Islam is not a supporter of slavery in that way. So, uh, as an example, so there are more, ma many ways that, that push a Muslim to free a slave rather than take a slave. So, Islam uh, did not promote the idea of slavery. So, after the Arabian Peninsula and the Arabs accepted Islam, slavery was not, and the slaves were definitely not treated the same way that they were treated before. And it was definitely not a black and white thing, or a black and Arab thing, or an African thing. The island of Zanzibar, between the 9th and the 10th centuries, for example, very interestingly enough, the island of Zanzibar, which is nowadays in Tanzania, became the Islamic center of trade. And Islam spread into the interior from there. By the 10th century, the Kilwa Sultanate, founded by Ali ibn al-Hassan Shirazi, a Persian at the Swahili coast um, was spread. Islam in Somalia, Ethiopia, Eritrea and Djibouti spread quickly by the 10th century. So basically the whole of East Africa going deeper into East Africa. The Swahili language, by the way, in East Africa, which has become a very big language nowadays, the Swahili language is nothing else but a, a, an Arabic Creole. Now, a Creole language, we know Creole languages from the Caribbean. We know Creole languages in, East, in South America, in certain parts of Africa. Swahili is basically an Arabic Creole language. It's a development from the Arabic language. 
and uh, you will see that the vocabulary in, in Swahili is massive, is very, very huge, uh, very big, uh, taken from the Arabic language. Um, by the 19th century, by the 19th century, Islam had gone inwards towards Burundi, Rwanda, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Okay, so slowly Islam developed. Now, by the 19th century, many European missionaries had been there already. That's correct, that's true, and they had reached the Democratic Republic of Congo as well. It was a Belgian colony, Rwanda, Burundi, Belgian colonies. So the Belgians were there. Europeans had reached already the, the, that part of the world. However, however, Islam had established already its roots, had put its roots already in Africa long, long, long before the colonialists even um, arrived in Africa. Another example I want to mention before we finish, uh, the island of Madagascar, a very interesting case, it was used as, 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 as uh, many trading posts uh, were established by Muslim Arabs and by East Africans along the northwest coast of the island. And other Muslim groups established a kingdom in the south. Now, interestingly enough, in the third century already, so before Islam, the original population in Madagascar came from Indonesia. So, an amazing situation here now. Again, we're looking into, as we said before, the Hungarians originally, they come from Central Asia, the Huns. The original population of Madagascar are actually Indonesians. And they brought with them also their language. And we can find it nowadays, for example, uh, many words in the Malagasy, in the language of Madagascar, um, um, go back to the Indonesian language and again the Indonesians have a lot of Arabic elements in there, mashallah. Exciting, these, these things, these things are, you cannot know if you don't look into history, of course. The Comoros Islands, again, the four Comoros, Comoros Islands with, with, which exist nowadays, um, the name itself is already Arabic, coming from Qamar, the moon. Uh, these uh, islands um, are uh, mainly an Arab Swahili population, as well as Persians. Another interesting uh, case again, um, Persians and people of Indian origin, Muslims mainly, uh, were doing trade. They settled in these islands, Madagascar, as well as Comoros Islands. And the one of the official languages of, of the Comoros Islands is actually Arabic, mashallah. So the majority, of course, Muslims also there. And we can go on like this. One last, very last point I would like to make, again, as we said, this is not done with one episode, of course. One very last and important point. Islam spread in Southern Africa, in countries like South Africa, Namibia, maybe even Botswana and Zimbabwe, but mainly South Africa. That's an, 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 an unbelievable fact, actually. The Dutch, um, the tiny country in, in, in Europe, in Western Europe, of not more than 15 million people, these people had once an empire. And part of the empire was Indonesia. Indonesia, the biggest Muslim country in the world. Another part of the empire was South Africa. Okay, the Dutch went to South Africa and they were fighting the English down there. What happened? The Dutch wanted to get rid of the Indonesian Shuyukh, who were actually calling for jihad against the Dutch uh, colonialists. So they would take um, as soon as they saw people uh, rising, raising their voice in, in the masjids or raising their voice outside shuyukh ulama, they would take them from there and take them to South Africa, put them in the desert, give them a house and leave them there basically to die. What happens? These shuyukh gather slowly black population around them. These black people who of course uh, fled because of the mistreatment by the white uh, settlers in South Africa, they would go to these places because they would find refuge there and they would accept Islam. So Islam in South Africa, subhanallah, Islam in South Africa developed because of Dutch colonialism in Indonesia. Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much, Holland. So mashallah, if we look at these, these amazing facts, I really think that there's so much to say still, but uh, we have to come to an end, unfortunately. And um, Inshallah, inshallah, we will look deeper into other continents and other countries as well. Jazakumullah khair, I hope you enjoyed it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To find out more about the works of Dr. Steph Kerris, visit his website at www.stephkerris.com or follow him on social media at Dr. Steph Kerris.